Well, Josh, thank you so much for applying for the data analyst position. Uh, before we get started, I just need to ask you what your salary expectation is for this role. I'm so glad you asked that question. I require a sum of no less than $100 a year. Uh, I don't think $100 a year is a livable wage, but if that's what you want us to pay you, I'm happy oh, wait, to Wait, wait, I misspoke. $100 billion a year and a sign-on bonus of one large cheese pizza. I'm the best data analyst in the world, and the world knows it. I don't think we can go as high as $100 billion a year. Could you come down a little bit to mm, $100,000 a year? Does that work? Fine, fine, but I still get my large cheese pizza oh, too. Oh man, sorry, I don't think we can do that sign-on bonus. We just ran out of our last cheese pizza. We got lots of Hawaiian though. Oh, is that so? Well, in that case... <laughs> Today I'm going to break down the top things that I've learned when negotiating a salary for your next data analyst job. Before you even start applying for jobs, you should have some rough idea of what you want to get paid. Otherwise, you might actually be leaving money on the table. Now, personally, I always prepare two numbers. I have my stretch goal amount, which is the highest that I think I can get paid. And then I have my minimum amount, which is the least I'm willing to be paid. Pick that minimum amount carefully because you also have to weigh that against the benefits that that job is offering, like paid time off, retirement contributions, insurance. To come up with those numbers, you need to do that research ahead of time to see what do data analysts in your area typically get paid for the same equivalent amount of experience. You can get a good idea of this if you go to payscale.com, glassdoor.com, or salary.com. I always visit all three of these websites and then I write down the highest number I'm able to find and I use that as my stretch goal. And for the least I'm willing to get paid, I usually look at the range that I see from those three websites and I pick some number that I'm comfortable with in that range. Usually that's somewhere in the middle. Here's an example. Let's say that my goal is to work as a data analyst at UC San Diego. If I go to salary.com, here's what I see when I look up what data analysts make in the San Diego area. If I go to glassdoor.com though, I can get a little bit deeper and I can actually see what data analysts at that company, UC San Diego, actually tend to make. That pay ranges from 60 to 91,000 in the most likely range as we see here. Here. So I'm going to pick the $91,000 as my stretch goal amount. Now, like I said, for my least paid amount, I tend to pick the middlemost number or the median, but it really depends on what you're comfortable with after considering also the benefits of the job that you would be getting. Now, I do all of this research before I even apply for the positions. Here's why. Recruiters often try to get you to commit to a salary requirement before you even start the interview. They do this because they want to know if they can afford you, and they also want to get some negotiating power later on if they offer you a job. You have two options when you do this. Option A is to politely decline to tell the interviewer that information and wait until an offer is made. Option B is to tell them immediately, and there's pros and cons to both options. If you are new to data analytics, I would recommend option A. Here's why. Pros of option A is that it's the option to pick if you want to try and make as much money as possible out of this first job. If the company is the first to suggest a salary amount, they might end up overshooting your initial expectations. This is particularly nice for you if you are a new data analyst and you have a low bar for what you think you should earn. For example, in 2016, when I applied for my first job as a data analyst, I took this approach. And when I was offered the job, I was offered a salary of $78,000 which adjusted for inflation would today be worth $97,500. It was way more than I expected and I was just super excited. And that offer amount actually exceeded what most entry-level data analysts tend to make in the area of Seattle, which is where I am based. Now, before I applied, I told myself that I would be happy with $60,000, so my bar was lower. If I had told them that, guess how much I would be making? 
At most, I would have been making $60,000. Here's the cons for option A. You might go through the whole interview process only to find out that the offer is much lower than you expected. So do keep that in mind if you take this approach. Now, option B is where you tell them your salary expectation right at the beginning when they ask for it. I would recommend this approach for data analysts who feel that they are overpaid in their current role with their current experience level. The pros with option B is you can just cut right to the chase and tell the interviewer, listen, I can only work for this company if I make this amount of money per year. And then they should be able to tell you right away if that number is within their budget. If not, then you can part ways early and save yourself the trouble of interviewing for that position in the first place. The downside to this approach is that if you're the first one to provide a number, you can be sure that that company is probably going to try and haggle down a little bit. Or at best, they might offer you what you asked for, but very, very rarely are they actually going to go above what you asked for. They're trying to find a bargain. So now you might ask, if I choose option B, which amount do I give them? Do I give them the stretch goal or do I give them the minimum amount that I'm willing to make? That's going to depend on your risk tolerance. If you give them the stretch number, there's a chance they might say, sorry, that's just too much for our budget. We're not interested. But the trade-off with that is that the higher risk comes with a greater reward because if they can meet that number, then your potential pay goes up. If you give them a minimum number, then there's a lower likelihood that they're not going to continue with an interview, but it now gives them the opportunity to pare down how much they offer even more. Personally, I usually give the company my stretch number if I provide my salary expectations, and then usually it gets pared down towards a middle intermediate number that's just above what I thought I was going to make at the minimum. So to recap, if you wanna try making as much money as you can, then decline to tell the interviewer your salary expectation at the very beginning. If your goal is to eliminate the jobs that could end up paying you less than your desired salary, then you should tell the recruiter your required salary at the very beginning whether you give them the stretch goal or the minimum number is up to your risk tolerance. Now let's say you ace the interview and you get a job offer. Now what happens? Well, the hiring manager is going to present an offer to you. Now, regardless of what they offer, I always either say, hmm, let me think about that, or I need to discuss this with my wife. Why? Well, because one time I said the same exact thing after I was presented an offer and they upped their offer amount by including a $5,000 sign-on bonus, which I wasn't expecting. So you might end up getting lucky and have a nicer deal fall in your lap just because the hiring manager is really eager to hire someone. With that said, let's look at all of the offer possibilities visually. You picked option A. Regardless of what they offer you, you could ask them for more money. So if they offer me lower than what I expected to be offered, I ask for more. If they give me an offer that's between my minimum amount and my stretch goal, I ask for more. And even if they are above my stretch goal, I still ask for more. The worst that they can say is no. So I always ask. Now, if you picked option B, your negotiating power is a little bit more limited because you already gave them a number. So you will look silly if you try to negotiate above that number that you already gave them. Unless you have a competing job offer, you're gonna be capped at that number. Now, if they offer you an amount that is lower than what you asked for, here's what I would do. You could either stand firm on the number that you asked for, or you could meet somewhere in the middle. This again depends on your risk tolerance. If you stand firm on that number, you risk that offer being rescinded. This is less likely if you try to meet them somewhere in the middle. But unless I gave them a number at the beginning and they just offered me the same amount that I asked for, I always, always, always ask for more money. So far, I have never been denied extra money when I ask for it, and I've done this five times over the past eight years. Now, if they ask for a reason why you think you are worth that much, just tell them that you did your own market research and you believe that your skills are worth that much. And that's basically the process. Hopefully you get offered a job and you negotiate and you just make tons of money. Now, assuming that you land a job in analytics and that job is in the healthcare industry, I've got another great video for you to check out on my top tips for you to accelerate your career as a data analyst in healthcare. So I highly encourage you to check that out if you haven't already. I hope you find this video useful. Drop some comments down below if you'd like to share your experience negotiating salary with your company. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in another video.